Hello students, uh, today we are going to start with the next chapter that is motion of system of particles and rigid body. This entire chapter is otherwise called as rotational motion. So it is uh, usually called as rotational motion and um, it is given as motion of system of particles and rigid body is given there but uh, usually the entire thing it revolves around how body moves in the center of axis and it rotates with that center of axis. So this one is also divided into two parts. So one is the first part is center of mass. So center of mass is something which you are going to see in this class and the following class will be going to the next part. So what is center of mass? Center of mass means suppose if you have uh, maybe a dumbbell is there. So you have a dumbbells, you have seen a dumbbells, dumbbells is something like this. Um, and if there is a dumbbell is there, so this is a heavy weight here and there is another weight here connected with this one. So there is a center here where the entire weight is supposed to be concentrated here. So that point is called center of mass. Sometimes center of mass it could be also of two or three different body system. For example, you have a 1 kg mass and another body is it is a 2 kg mass and the next one is a 3 kg mass. All these three also, you can relate with all of them having with the center, you can make some lines but there will be a center of mass of this three body system also. The center of mass of the three body system will not be at the center because this is a big body, this is also another big body, this is a lighter body. So it will be somewhere lying over here, closer to this one and little away from this one but closer to this particular thing, it could be there, in this one that is called center of mass. Now this center of mass, suppose if you apply an external force, you apply external force, you apply on the center of mass, that's enough then the entire body system, if it is connected with each other, it will start moving. Right? So, center of mass is defined as the point where the entire mass of all the system is supposed to be concentrated. I am again repeating my words. Center of mass is defined as the point where the entire mass of the all the system is supposed to be concentrated, that is called center of mass. If we apply an external force, the force can be applied at the center of mass and the body will immediately move with the same velocity for all the bodies together. So let us read this one. The, um, the motion of the whole is, when the system moves under some external force, then this point moves as if the entire mass of the system are concentrated at this point. What is this point? The center of mass. Center of mass moves as if the entire mass of the system are concentrated at this point, at this center of mass. Also, the external force were applied at this point, this point is center of mass and this point is called the center of mass of a system. The motion of a system can be described in terms of the motion of the center of mass. So that's the way we can have. So it could be any n number of system, lot of bigger bodies could be there, several bodies could be there, all of bodies could have a center of mass. Okay. So center of mass is very very important part for a three body system or maybe a four body system you have four bodies are there and how is the center of mass is there you can also find out. So in order to determine the center of mass of a two particle system so you can write down center of mass write the definition the definition is the point where the entire mass of the body is supposed to be concentrated is called center of mass. The external force were applied at this point will move the entire body together. So that point is called center of mass. The next topic is center of mass of two particle system. Please write down center of mass of two particle system. Whenever you see a two particle system we will be drawing a graph. We will be drawing a graph. The graph will be of y axis and x-axis. Now suppose this is a body of mass m1 
and this is the another body of mass m2 now this body is placed at a distance of r1 vector this is a position vector position vector will have an arrow mark here also and this body is placed at r2 vector r2 is a position vector of m2 now these two bodies are connected like this so why we do this one the position vector why do we do this one because it is very easy to solve this starting from the origin from the origin r1 vector from the origin r2 vector this is a position of these two masses otherwise what you do x y x comma y and x comma y also we can do that that's also fine that's also way also it's fine now m2 is bigger so somewhere the center of mass of these two things may not be in the center it could be somewhere closer to the bigger body am i right because bigger body is definitely it will be there so to the bigger body the center of mass will have a position vector of r vector r vector is the center of mass point now after drawing this one the center of mass of two body system is given as r vector is going to be equal to m1 into r1 vector plus m2 into r2 vector upon m1 plus m2 so that is the way in which it looks where r vector is the value of the position vector from the origin till this point so origin is o from here oc is r vector so this position vector will have this particular value here so please write down this the next one is for the center of mass to be coinciding at the origin of the system origin of the system means so this is the origin here so this is mass m1 and this is mass m2 so you place the center of mass this center of mass will be there right here okay so maybe it could be this is the value of c definitely this who sees i didn't write draw it properly c would have been somewhere here actually because that doesn't matter i've just drawn it it's okay now this is r1 this is r2 from this one so how do we write this when r vector is going to be equal to 0 what will happen this r vector will become equal to 0 because we have placed the c at this origin this m has come here when m2 has come here so it is just placed on the origin here so that means r is going to be equal to 0 this whole formula is going to be equal to 0 is going to be equal to m1 r1 vector plus m2 r2 vector upon m1 plus m2 m1 plus m2 if you multiply it will become zero so m1 r1 vector is going to be equal to minus m2 r2 vector so that's the way it is it will be a negative of this one so this will be negative and this will be positive but you will be able to see this one it's coming in the origin that also it's the right way now the next one is this is only for two particle system we have taken what if we are going to take it for a much more number of particle system n particle system center of mass of n particle system so it becomes cm is going to be equal to r vector is going to be equal to m1 r1 vector plus m2 r2 vector plus etc mn rn vector divided by m1 plus m2 plus etc mn 
So that is the way it will work. So you have a n particle system. You can keep on going on and writing like this. Okay. So I will just flip few pages and I'll show you how it is. So you can see this one in the first page itself. You'll find this as the uh, value which is given here. So you'll be able to see this one, right? So this is the value which is given here, and then followed by go to the next page. That's a big derivation. This entire derivation you need not do it. This derivation is not important for you. So again, same thing. It is given here as R center of mass equal to m1 R1 plus m2 R2 upon m1 plus m2. This is already given here. All right. So the next one is you have here also um, the n particle system. If there is so much of particles are there, what will happen? So this is also given here. Right. So these are the various things that you will find. Okay. So the next thing is. The center of mass of a rigid bodies. What happens to a center of mass of rigid bodies? I'll just give you a quick idea about what happens to a center of mass of rigid bodies. Center of mass of rigid bodies. What does it mean by rigid body? Suppose if you have a sphere, right? So a sphere is there. Where is the center of mass? At the center, right? So it is going to be sphere. So, what happens to a rectangular lamina? Rectangle lamina. If it is a rectangular plate or something, we call it as lamina. So, if it is a rectangle, what happens? So, center of mass is going to be at the diagonal meeting of meeting point of diagonals. If it is a square, again same thing meeting point of diagonals, right? So if it is going to be a triangle, it's going to be the meeting point of the centroids, okay? Meeting point of Um, meeting point of medians, you can say, medians. So that's called centroid. At centroid, some solid figures. If you see, if it's a cylinder, what will happen? At the center of the axis. The next one is if it is a cone. With the cone, what will happen here? So it is going to be this is going to be bigger part, so it will be one fourth is going to be this much. This is going to be three by four. So this is the center of mass at one by fourth from the base. So these are the various center of masses you should be able to have an understanding how the center of mass of a solid lamina or solid uh, uh, some kind of material where it will be so you will be able to have a thing if it is a kind of a regular thing then it's quite easy to find out the center of mass all right now this is the diagram given there it is of a, um, a kind of any kind of a triangle which is there and it is the meeting point of all the medians it is called centroid and here also it is at the height of 1 by 4 from the base now we will go ahead to see the next part called center of mass of body when the motion is going on, when the body is on the motion, motion of the center of mass. When the body moves, what happens? So we are going to see that one. So motion of center of mass, motion of center of mass, this we already know R is equal to M1 R1 plus M2 R2 plus is etc. to M1 Rn upon this one. Let us consider um, this is sun. We know this one sun and this is earth. So earth is already revolving around an elliptical orbit here like this. So you will find earth moves like this and an elliptical orbit. We already know moon is also revolving around the earth. And not only moon, there are so many other satellites also revolving. Everything is going around the earth along this path. 
you will find moon also keeps on going around the sun only because moon is anyhow it is going to revolve around the earth constantly so you find there is a center of mass between earth and moon somewhere here and that center of mass only actually moves so if there is around the earth there are so many particles are there m1 m2 m3 etc till mn and the entire system including mass of the moon the entire system is called the total mass m1 plus m2 plus m3 etc till mn then this also is moving there is a movement is there with a velocity v so we can find out the center of mass how it moves with a velocity v so dr vector upon dt is going to be equal to d by dt of this entire thing m1 r1 plus m2 r2 etc mn rn upon m1 plus m2 mn so which is going to be equal to 1 by capital m so that is d by dt so this is going to be called as velocity because dr by dt is called velocity so if you want to write in this way 1 by m is going to be equal to m1 into d by dt of r1 that is called v1 d by dt of r2 that is called m2 into v2 plus mn vn so that is going to be v so v is going to be equal to the entire of the system it's now it's moving so that's a way we can also look at it look at it so it could be also acceleration when the body is moving in acceleration also we can see how the acceleration moves also right okay so if you do acceleration what will happen dv by dt you again do one more thing that's going to be acceleration so 1 by m into m1 into a1 plus m2 into a2 plus etc mn into an that is the acceleration of this whole body is will be there one more time of differentiation will be the one so you can take a look on this center of mass you know this formula 1 by m is taken outside this entire of the denominator has been taken outside as 1 by m m1 r1 plus all these things is there after this one then what happens you will find the differentiation is taking place in both sides one differentiation is there then this is called v of center of mass is going to be equal to velocity of the center of mass is going to be equal to 1 by m so this entire thing is given by m1 r1 m1 v1 plus m2 v2 etc till m1 v n so that's a way same thing could be of acceleration also right so in other words it's also it's going to be equal to force also external force also we can say right so this is the way in which it goes on so the velocity of center of mass it will be equal to constant when acceleration is going to be equal to zero that is external force is going to be equal to zero in an isolated system if you want to talk about a isolated system the external force if it is zero no external force is given then acceleration is zero zero therefore the velocity is going to be equal to constant without any external force the velocity will be a constant there is not be any acceleration that's what they are going to say some example of center of mass you already can see this one explosion of a bomb how it explodes definitely the center of mass will be uh, there as the it will be moving according to the center of mass the explosion will be going along with that so no external force is been present all of them are internal energy it's all the fragments it will be all be going towards one particular point okay it will be just remaining at the same point next one is radioactive decay so when there is there is a uranium is there and then it is splitting into helium and thorium then there will be a center of mass that center of mass is so important and even though it is two so this center of mass will be continuing to remain same explosion of a projectile when it is getting there and it it explodes so the center of mass will continue to move on the same projectile path even though the body is split into several portions the center of mass will continue to move in the same path so that's what it's written there now this chapter gets over it is a very small chapter so the chapter gets over momentum conservation so you know already momentum conservation the sum of momentum p is equal to p1 plus p2 plus etc to pn so the velocity the center of mass of the velocity v cm is equal to 1 by m so m1 v1 and all these things it could be split so the momentum is going to be equal to capital m into velocity of center of mass so 
we can say when no external force is given there, when no external force is acting here, then momentum is going to be constant. You already know this one. So it is just for an understanding. You need not learn this one. It is just for understanding with this. This one gets over. What is the difference of center of mass and center of gravity? It is given here. So center of mass, it is just a point where the mass is supposed to be concentrated. And center of um, gravity, it is supposed to be a body in which at a point when the entire weight of the body is going to be concentrated. So mass, it is there and then it is a weight of the body. And the mass of the body remains constant and is independent of the uh, position while the weight of the body depends on the acceleration due to gravity which depends upon the position of the body. So there is a two differences there. So you can just take a look on it. Now we will go to the, some of the numericals and solve how it works. So take your pen, try to solve some numericals. It will be quite helpful for you to understand. Yeah, Let us take a look on this question. Example number one. Two bodies of masses 0.5 kg and 1 kg are lying in the xy plane at points minus 1, 2 and 3, comma 4. This is the coordinates in which the body is lying. So the first body is lying in this coordinate, second body is lying in this coordinate. Respectively, locate the center of mass of the system. Very, very simple question. Let us try to understand. Two bodies, masses M1 and M2. So if you look at this one, 0.5 kg we write it as M1, 0.1 kg we write it as M2. And this 0.5 is located at minus 1, 2, it is x1, y1 is equal to minus 1, 2. And then 1 kg we, we name it as x2, y2, it is 3, comma 4. So that's the um, system here. Now, it looks like these two bodies are lying in a plane like this. So, I don't know, maybe this is given as minus 1. So, x could be also minus 1 here because this is minus x so it could be somewhere here and then 2 so it could be minus 1 comma 2 this is the body which is 0 0.5 and the next one is 3 comma 4 so it could be somewhere here so 3 comma 4 it could be quite here maybe this is the second body so this is m2 1 kg so this is the body in which it is lying here. Now look at this one. This is called 3 comma 4. Right. So always they will try to name it in terms of a x and y coordinate. So you should remember this one. It is always a graphical representation. So graphically they have told here the position. Next is this position. How to do this one. So m1 is equal to 0 0.5. x1 is going to be equal to minus 1 m2 is going to be equal to 1 kg x2 is going to be equal to 3 x2 is going to be equal to 3 so let us kind of try to find out only the x coordinate what is the x value of this one it is going to be equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 upon m1 plus m2 so it is going to be equal to 0 0.5 into x1 is minus 1 plus m2 is 1 kg into x2 is 3 upon 0 0.5 plus 1 m1 plus m2 so what's the value here it is going to be equal to minus 0 0.5 plus 3 upon 1.5 it is 2.5 upon 1.5 that is x value right now similarly you can find out for the y2 component also so m1 is going to be 0 0.5 m2 1 kg so y1 is going to be equal to what is y1 2 y2 4 y2 is 4 here y1 is 2 4 is the value so y is going to be equal to m1 y1 plus m2 y2 upon m1 plus m2 so it's going to be equal to 0 0.5 it is m1 and what is y1 2 plus what is m2 1 kg y2 4 kg 4 meters or maybe so 0 0.5 plus 1 
So what will be the answer here? So 0.5 into 2, it will become 1. Plus, this will become 4. 1 into 4 is 4. This is 1.5. It is 5 upon 1.5, that is y. So, what is the final answer for the center of mass? So, center of mass is going to be equal to x comma y is going to be equal to this will be equal to what you can write it as so 25 upon 15 it can be cancelled out as 5 by 3 so it is 5 by 3 and this also it could be cancelled out you can say it is 1 and this is 0 0.3 it is 1 upon 0 0.3 so that's a way in which it can be finalized this is the position somewhere in this line somewhere in this line it will be positioning somewhere here it will be positioning somewhere here that is the center of mass will be there this center of mass will be like this so we have just made a kind of a value here let us see how it works here yes 5 by 3 and 10 by 3 so instead of 1 by this one it could be put as 10 by 3 also okay it can put it as 10 by 3 that's the way in which this answer is given here all right let us go to the next question here look at this question question number two two masses six and two units are at positions six i cap minus seven j cap and the next position is two i cap plus minus plus five j cap minus eight k cap respectively deduce the position of the center of mass now this is already a straight equation which is given here the equation is quite straight so mass m1 is going to be equal to 6 units m2 is going to be equal to 2 unit so if you find r1 vector is going to be equal to 6 i cap minus 7 j cap r2 vector is going to be equal to 2 i cap plus 5 j cap minus 8 k cap so that is the value which is given here now data use the position of the center of mass we know already what the center of mass is going to be equal to m1 r1 vector plus m2 r2 vector upon m1 plus m2 so what is this one 6 into this whole thing 6 i cap minus 7 j cap plus 2 into 2 into 2 i cap plus 5 j cap minus 8 k cap so that is the value of m2 into r2 upon 6 plus 2. Now you need to put together everything and then you will get an answer. You multiply this one and you multiply this also. And you multiply this one and finally you will get an all of them together as an i cap, j cap and k cap. You will get an answer upon 8 because this is going to be 6 plus 2 upon 8. So it is actually 5 i cap minus 4 j cap minus 2 k cap that is the value here this is the center of mass upon 8 all right so this is already given here you will be able to see this one right so with this i close maybe in the next class we will be doing little more numericals you can try to do that one i will give only one question as a uh, homework for you one question question number one 1 kg 2 kg 3 kg lie in xy plane respectively 1 comma 2 0 comma minus 1 and 2 comma minus 3 find the coordinates of the center of mass how will you find out try this yourself okay you will have m1 m2 and m3 you have x1 x2 x3 and what is this one y1 y2 and y3 please mark all the points okay the next one is you will have the two coordinate system you will have x is going to be equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 upon m1 plus m2 plus m3 and then y coordinate is going to be equal to m1 y1 plus m2 y2 plus m3 y3 upon m1 plus m2 plus m3 finally if you do all of them you will get a one answer you will get try this one alright ok children see you have a good day bye